Lately, I've found myself less enthused about seeing my doctor. Why? Because in this stage of my life, those visits almost always conclude with him telling me how much more I should exercise and how much less I should eat. And I tend to walk out of those appointments feeling like I've disappointed him. But the after-visit plan he prints out and hands to me when I leave his office is not designed to increase the quality of my relationship with him. Its purpose is to help me live longer and better. And that thought helps me comprehend the treasure contained in John 15, 9 to 10. In the previous passage, Jesus invited his disciples to abide in him. He warned them of the hazards encountered by those who don't and described some of the rich benefits enjoyed by those who do. Then he amplified this appeal by inviting them to abide in his love, and he defined that love as the kind the Father has for him. Let's just pause and stand in awe of that jaw-dropping truth for a moment. When the hiking trail bursts out of the woods into a glorious meadow with a view of a majestic peak, you just have to stop and take in the beauty of the scene. And the Savior's words here present us with such a stunning and humbling revelation, we simply can't go any further without reflecting on its magnitude. You and I are loved by the Son of God with the same purity, intensity, and consistency that He is loved by the Father. The weight and impact of that realization is literally staggering. It's so profound, it should never cease to cause our knees to buckle with reverence. So how is it even possible that the Lord would need to follow that statement with an appeal to remain in His love? It's heartbreaking to think we're so fickle and full of ourselves, we'd have to be reminded not to lose interest in the love of Jesus. But that's the sad reality. And when we do, although his love for us remains steadfast, we cease to enjoy all that it offers. That's why Jesus went on to say there's a way to ensure it doesn't happen. He said if we keep his commandments, we'll abide in his love. It's not that his affection is adjusted based on our levels of obedience. He doesn't love us more when we follow his commands and less when we don't. He loves us the same no matter what. Jeremiah 31.3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And Romans 5.8 tells us God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But being the object of Christ's unchanging love is not the same as benefiting from it. Obeying the Lord's commands is not about proving our devotion to Him by how consistently we adhere to a checklist of approved behaviors. It's about entering the environment where we can flourish within His love. It's only when we follow our Maker's instructions for how life should be lived that everything actually works as He intends and results in our experiencing peace that passes understanding, Philippians 4.7, joy that's inexpressible, 1 Peter 1.8, and life more abundant, John 10.10. 10. And that's what we all want, isn't it? So let's think of these two precious verses as a kind of after-visit plan designed by the one who loves us more than we can ever know to help us fully benefit from that love.